Riding a bike is often considered one of the core skills that people pick up while growing up. And if asked, people often say that it is a skill that you never lose. After those initial falls and once you get balancing down, it is supposed to be easy and fun. A skill that you can pull out even after going years without using it. The dedicated ride bikes for miles, even going so far as to cross entire states or even countries. But as we all know, any time you venture outside, there is always the chance that you will run into the wrong kind of people. My name is Brianne, and I'm the host and creator of Among the Dirt and Trees, a show where we explore true crime cases that occur out in nature. In today's episode, we're going to discuss the 1894 disappearance, murder, and search for famed cyclist Frank Lenz, a young man who decided to travel the world in his bike and never finished his journey. To this day, his body has never been recovered, though it is believed that his gear can be found tucked away in stores and homes near where he disappeared. Frank Lenz developed an interest in cycling in his early 20s. This was a time when cycling was really starting to take off as a popular sport and hobby, at least in the way that we know today. He worked to purchase his very own bike and started entering the local cycling community. He trained, explored new roads, and hoped to make it as a competitive cyclist. By all accounts, he was quite good, but he personally believed that he struggled with a sort of natural disadvantage. He believed that at 5'7", physically, he could not really compete with top performers even though he seemed to be doing really well. But from what I can tell, he didn't just want to be moderately good. He wanted to be great, and he wanted recognition, which is something that I think a lot of us can relate to. Frank started to focus less on racing and more on traveling, so he started heading out in his bike with a camera to get interesting shots from local areas. And remember, this was the late 1800s, so these are very cool black and white photos. His collection of photos grew, including images that captured the human view of these popular and sometimes unknown spaces. And he even made some friends along the way. Ultimately, he basically decided to start the classic equivalent of travel vlogging. He took photos and wrote stories and notes from his travels, which he then sent off to magazines. Finally, he landed an agreement with the popular magazine, Outing. He told them that he wanted to be one of the first to travel the world on a bike, and they agreed to sponsor him. This was at a point in time where people had done this, but not very many. And during this time, he traveled the world. For over two years, he spent time making his way through a bunch of places, like Japan, China, India, and what we now consider Pakistan. After two full years of travel, he was almost done with his journey and more than ready to go home. Seeing the world and meeting new people was fun, and he was thrilled to have his work published in an outing, but... He still had to finish. It was then, less than two weeks from his arrival in Turkey, that he disappeared. When you have a loved one on a journey that puts them out of communication, it can be unsettling. You find yourself waiting to hear that next message from them, that next communication that things are okay. 
But for Frank's mom, that next message never came. Traveling by bike across unknown territory is something that isn't exact. You know about when the person should show up, but real life in unpredictable places doesn't work on a clock like that. So she waited. She waited until she received a call from one of Frank's stops saying he never showed up to collect his supplies or his mail. This was a huge red flag. A couple months passed without hearing from him, and his family started contacting anyone that they could for answers. But no one, not locals, not his editor, not government officials, could tell them where Frank was. Somewhere between his last known stop and where he was supposed to arrive, he disappeared. To make matters worse, the magazine was continuing to publish his stories as if nothing was wrong. Even though they knew that he was missing. Readers were celebrating his efforts, while his family and professional connections knew that he was gone. And worse, that he might never come home. They had no way of knowing if he was sick, hurt, Attacked, killed, or abducted for ransom. No one had any answers, and the government contacts in the area basically said that it was a dangerous area and they should presume the worst and basically accept that he would never be found. His family, however, wanted none of that. They recruited another cyclist who had already made the journey a man named William Sektabin. He agreed to take on the journey with some help from a local support system. And I have to say that I think that there's something pretty amazing in William agreeing to take on this search. Imagine being asked to ride the path that the last person didn't come back from. Even though William completed global travels before, The fact is that he was walking into a dangerous situation. There was always the chance that he and his fellow travelers could end up just like Frank simply because they were looking for Frank. But he still agreed to do it. William and his fellow travelers started following the path, even noting that some of the areas were places he had personally been told to avoid at all costs because they were so dangerous. They traveled, asking around for any clues, until they stumbled across some disturbing information. In one area, locals seemed to have some pieces of Frank's gear. These pieces weren't confirmed, but the descriptions were fairly telling bike tubes, camera equipment, and other odds and ends. Finally, asking around led him to a local leader, Nisei, who claimed to have killed Frank with five others. Rumors said that Nisei had stumbled across Frank while he was sleeping, and that Nisei had started handling his gun, and Frank woke up to it. They claimed that Frank snatched it out of Nisei's hand. An obvious insult to a man used to having power. So they waited, they ambushed him, and they killed him. While traveling the world and chasing greatness, if the rumors are true, Frank died because... Someone thought he was rude. Frank's family and William fought to have the people charged and to have Frank brought home, but they never found his body. The men believed to be responsible were charged for their crimes and imprisoned, but it didn't stick. 
every single one of them managed to escape from jail. It's unclear how much help they had, but we know that they were not caught again. In the end, Frank's mother received a $7,500 payout, and no real answers about what happened to her son. The truth is that we really don't even know if the story of his death was true at all. And quite a few people speculate that there might be more to the story. For all we know, Frank's story had a very different ending. So, if you would like to discuss innovative ways to approach your industry, the strenuous nature of long journeys, or how awkward it actually is to hop on a bike after several years of not riding one, feel free to contact me on Twitter or Instagram using the tag at datpod. With that being said, I am sure we all know that Twitter is in a precarious situation right now. And I have actually deleted Instagram from my phone for the season to support my winter work efforts. So... Expect some delays and replies for the time being since I am checking these accounts irregularly. As always, I appreciate your patience, and if you are spending this week eating good food and spending time with loved ones, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks, guys. <laughs>